Just the king of Assyria and the Rabshaka. Right? That's a beautiful word. I love that word, Rabshaka. That's actually the, the king's servant from Assyria. That's the high court king. So he's like one of the upper echelon, like third or fourth in charge in the kingdom of Assyria. That's the name that they gave that person, the Rabshaka. And he came and spoke to the people. Right, so we have Hezekiah, the king of Syria, we have the Rabshaka, we have Ahaz, and the last person that's important for us to know about is Isaiah, right? Because it's the book of Isaiah, so therefore we're probably going to say something about Isaiah. So, we have this story from the 36, 37 chapters, and then we go back to chapter 2. Because you see, all of the book of Isaiah is talking about an understanding of who we are and who we're supposed to be in God. And how our lives work. In God's plan. You see King Ahaz back in the 7th chapter. Bruce is very familiar with this verse. Of the book of Isaiah. King Ahaz gets a prophecy from Isaiah about a coming birth. Of a woman who is with child and she shall bear a... And his name will be... Oh come on people, really? He will bear a... Son, say it with me. Son, say it with me. Son, thank you. That's better. And his name will be Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Right? What are we getting ready for in about a month? Christmas. Right? It's the prophecy of the coming of Jesus. And Ahaz wouldn't ask for it, but Isaiah gave it to him anyhow, because Ahaz wouldn't follow after what God was telling him to do. And Ahaz then has had a son, and the, the, the siege of Assyria continued, and it continued through at least the 14th year of the reign of King Hezekiah, which we hear about this morning. But Isaiah talks to us about understanding who we are in God and what we're supposed to do, right? How many of you have ever sat down and planned out your life? How many of you ever done that? Right? We sit down and we think, this is the way my life is going to work. This, these are the things that are going to happen. I'm going to finish in school. I'm going to go to this school. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to get married. I'm going to have 2.5 kids. I'm going to live in a house with a white picket fence. Right? We, we've had those plans. And how many times do they work? I heard it emphatically over here. I don't know if you guys heard that back over there. Zero. Right? The greatest, one of the best movies I've ever seen is called My Sister's Keeper. And the, the very front page of that movie, the very first thing you see on the screen when that movie comes up is, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. You see, because things normally don't go the way that we want them to. And we try to interject and make things happen the way that we think that they should happen. We try to mold and shape our lives in a way that things are going to work out to fit our plan. And that things are all going to be happen on purpose. And that things are going to fall into place. And it never happens that way. See, here in the book of, Hez of, the book of Isaiah, we have two kings, Ahaz and Hezekiah, that don't want to listen to what God has for them. God has to say that you're going to be under siege. But it's all going to be okay. This is what the plan is. 
And you see, the things that we don't hear here is the things that Ahaz did to try to not make the siege happen. And we, the things that we don't hear here is the plans that Hezekiah made that don't allow the siege to happen. Hezekiah made, made a, a pact or a covenant with the, with the country of Egypt about going against Assyria. And that's not what Isaiah told him that God wanted. And that's not what God wanted him to do. God wanted him to rest in peace and to walk slowly. That's why I said earlier as we were walking up the aisle, as Corinna and Naomi were walking up the aisle, rather slowly and purposefully to go and get the boxes. That that's what it's about. It's not about us rushing to get to the next goal. It's not about us rushing to get to the next thing. It's not about us making our lives happen in a such worked out, planned out way that everything happens the way that we think that it should. It's about walking slowly with God and knowing that no matter what happens, knowing that no matter what happens, God is always walking with us. No matter how bad things are, no matter how bad the siege is on your country, no matter how dark the valley is, no matter how deep the hole is, God is always walking with you. And God is always going to see you through. That's why we go back to the beginning of the book of Isaiah, where Isaiah mimics the same prophecy that's found in the book of Micah, that it says, there's not going to be war. You need to hold out and go to peace, because I'm going to work all of this through. You need to take all of your swords and pound them into plowshares, and you need to take all of your spears and make them be pruning hooks, because you don't need swords or spears anymore. I'm the one that's going to battle for you. I'm the one that's going to take care of it for you. All you have to do is hold my hand and walk with me. And if we can only do that, then God's going to make everything right. The other part of that is, is this thing back here. I do this because John wants me to. <laughs> no, I, I had this plan, I just didn't get one of these with me. The other part of that is this right here, right? Because we all have plans what needs to happen with everything in our lives, and we all have plans of everything that needs to happen with the stuff that's in here. Right? I move stuff around my pocket, hang on. With this, right? This, right? When the Roman soldiers were baptized, they were baptized with their right hand out of the water. Why? What? Somebody listened in confirmation. <laughs> That's the hand they used to hold their sword with. So they thought, if I get that hand baptized, then I can no longer kill people. And all of us as Christians are like, I'll be baptized except for... That's supposed to be funny. You're supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> right? You can have everything, God, except for... That's all mine. Right? When we make those plans, when we say those things, when we, when we say that God can't work in and through all of that parts of our lives, then we're limiting who God is. See, and that's why we fill out these cards. That's why you fill out these cards. The other thing that you need to know that every member here needs to know about these cards is, I don't look at this. I don't want to know what you put on this card. Do you know why? Because I have, I do have need to know what you put on this card because it could be a spiritual barometer of where things are happening in your life. But I don't need to know it because it's none of my business. What you put on this card is between you and God. Not you and me. Not you and this church. It's between you and God. Because things change. It's not always going to happen the way that we plan that they're going to. And sometimes you may not be able to do what you put on here. And you know what? That's fine. That's between you and God. That, that'll be all be taken care of. This is a barometer to help you understand how God can work in and through your lives. And how much of a part this body is to that. You see, because it's all about us understanding who God is. And who God wants us to be. And understanding his plan for our lives and not our own. So know that no matter how dark the valley is, that God will always see you through. If you'll just hold on to his hand and allow him to lead you. And go for a stroll. And know that he's never going to forsake you. He will guide you through this world so that you can be a beacon of hope and a beacon of love 
and help everyone see just how much God loves them as He loves you.